energy, young and old alike. The athlete training for a big race. The busy midwife with a newborn baby. And the baby herself. Whether we're in a hurry or taking it easy, we need energy. The fuel for this is food. But how does the body turn this fuel, this food, into energy? Fuel for the body is food, and food contains nutrients. Energy comes from some of the nutrients, which are also needed for other purposes. Some for growth, others for the body's repair and protection. We can choose what we eat, but it's the tubes and organs inside our bodies that get the nutrients from the food. The body is a converter, which processes the food and releases its nutrients and energy. For most of us, what goes on inside that body is something of a mystery. We know that food goes in here, and that we get rid of the unwanted remains when we go to the toilet. But we may not understand much about the parts of the body in between. Is the heart here? Or here? Or here? And the lungs with which we breathe? They're here. The stomach is here not as low as many people think. And below is the intestine, about six meters of it. If we're to look after our body, then we should at least know what's inside it and know what happens to food on its two or three days journey through it. Taking food into the mouth is called ingestion. But that's more than just forking it into a hole and swallowing it in one big gulp. Even if food is soft, the particles are too large for the body to use. They have to be broken down, and that process begins here. Different shaped teeth break and soften the food. They cut, they tear, they grind just like some of the implements in a kitchen. And if the food is dry, well, a little water soon sorts that out. Saliva works in much the same way. It is secreted in glands at the back of the mouth and under the tongue. But saliva is not just a lubricant. There are enzymes in it which begin to break down the food. And this is the start of the process we call digestion. Just the smell and the taste of food can make the saliva flow. It makes us want to eat. And then when we chew food, it helps to roll it into a ball shape which we can swallow. But food doesn't just drop down into the stomach. It's moved along by muscles which we don't control. That's why we can swallow even when we're upside down. And here's the evidence on X-ray. The stomach is a storage sack in which food is churned around for two or three hours. Here we're at the bottom of an empty stomach, looking back. The black tube is the endoscope, which is taking the photographs. When the stomach is full, we don't feel hungry, and the stomach churns the food to break it into small particles, and enzymes and acids make it into a liquid called chyme. This liquid is squirted a bit at a time into the small intestine. Despite its name, it's about six meters long, and it's where most digestion takes place. The ridges and folds on its inside wall are quite clear in the X-ray. 
and as you will see, they play an important part in the process. When the chyme leaves the stomach, it goes into the first part of the small intestine, called the duodenum, where digestive juices pour onto it. There is bile that comes from the liver and breaks down the fat into tiny droplets. And there are juices from the pancreas, which neutralize the effects of acids from the stomach and contain enzymes that help to break down carbohydrate, fat and protein. But how does the body get these nutrients into the bloodstream? This is done by a process of absorption, most of which takes place in the small intestine. The inside of the intestine looks like this. The wall is folded and covered with tiny projections called villi. It's a bit like a piece of velvet. And when all the folds and villi are flattened, it covers a much larger area. Six meters of intestine actually has a surface area of about 30 square meters. And that area acts a bit like a filter. Small particles go through the lining into the bloodstream. Some just soak through as they are doing here. But for others, the process is different. They are actively carried through the wall by special molecules. And it's in the small intestine that most vitamins and minerals are absorbed. What remains is carried to the large intestine or colon. It's much shorter than the small intestine. And for any remnants of food left, there isn't much digestion to do. Bacteria break down some of the more fibrous bits by fermentation and produce gas. But the main job of the large intestine is to take water out of what remains and to store the waste until we go to the toilet and eliminate it from the body as solid faeces. As food goes from the mouth to the stomach and then to the intestines, nutrients are taken from it and the body uses nutrients in different ways. Some nutrients help us grow. We need protein for growth. And whatever age we are, we'll need protein to repair and replace cells. Fat can be stored by the body for when we need energy and to keep us warm. But carbohydrate is the main source of energy, particularly for very active people. Getting the right nutrients isn't like taking a pill. This baby won't grow healthy on one food alone. We all need a whole range of nutrients from a well-chosen diet. You need water from drinks or from the food itself. And you need fibre to keep the digestive system healthy. Getting energy and nutrients from food involves different processes. Ingestion taking food into the mouth. Digestion, which begins in the stomach, but occurs mostly in the intestines, where food is broken into small particles. Absorption, passing digested food through the gut lining and into the blood. Elimination, getting rid of waste matter. It's these processes which provide the fuel for our muscles, give the energy for fun and games, and keep every one of us going through the hours of work, leisure and sleep. Tomorrow.